What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video on Ready or Not. Today we're going to be covering a brand new update that was just released by Ready or Not. And yes, this is an actual playable update. Oh my god, f***ing finally. After what, like six months? She. First, I'm going to talk about the newsletter that came with it, and then I'm going to talk about my experience with the update. So let's get into it. <clears throat> we'll start with the latest update to the Ready or Not Alpha is now live on Steam. This update brings a vast amount of changes and additions, including a new variant for the level training, new PvP game modes, and other features and improvements across the board. We will also release another follow-up update to this very soon, which will come with new bug fixes and an entirely new map, Shoot House. And they're showing it off with this GIF right here. I believe this is the inside map when you're inside the station the police station they have like a shoot house the one that we've seen in the gameplay trailer so that's cool continuing on new game modes now in alpha we've got vip escort swap must escort the randomly selected player vip to the extraction point within the level to win the round the enemy must prevent this by intercepting capturing and holding the vip hostage for a certain amount of time if the timer runs out and swat hasn't successfully freed the vip the enemy wins the round the next game mode they have here is arrest and rescue both teams have a limited set of lives Players gain lives by arresting enemies. The objective is to arrest all the members of the enemy team using less than lethal equipment while simultaneously rescuing teammates who are arrested. The first team to arrest the entire opposing team wins the round. The next game mode is Team Deathmatch, a version of the classic multiplayer game mode, hunt down and neutralize enemy players to score points. The first team to hit the point limit wins the round. In Ready or Not, however, arresting your opponent will net significantly more points than just taking them down. These game modes are now a part of the official server's rotation. Players can now join a multiplayer game by using our new matchmaking function create their own server and invite their friends or find and join a game through the server browser which has now made it back into the alpha so yeah before it was just a thing where you can only click on versus mode which essentially sends you into a random session with a bunch of players but now you can actually invite your friends into a private session and invite your friends basically or you can go into a dedicated server by just clicking on the server browser all right let's move on here there's a gif of less than lethal and it says less than lethal pepper gun causes unpleasant irritation as expected it says here less than lethal love to accompany the focus on tactical and less than lethal gameplay of these new game modes we have also made improvements to the vfx models audio and animation for the less than lethal weapons there's another gif here that's showing off the uh beanbag shotgun it says here less than lethal beanbag shotgun like a punch from afar you know to be honest i'm looking at these two gifs and i'm not really seeing like what the difference is i mean i guess i would have to look at the older updates because i can't really see the difference oh well let's move on one thing that they added to the game now is weapon bashing. Ooh, fun. Moreover, we are adding in weapon bashing, a melee function that allows players to quickly stun enemies at close range. I haven't really used this, so I have no idea how effective this actually is. I think I tried to like use it once, but it didn't work so well. But judging by this gift that's right here, ah, it seems effective because it actually looks like if you slap him in the face, he might actually fall on his knees. That's kind of cool. Maybe when the servers get more full, I'll be able to try it out, but we'll see. But the next time that I decide to go on to multiplayer, I might try it out it says here bash enemies with your weapon at close range to take them down and arrest them and that's pretty much it when it comes to less than lethal stuff pretty neat other changes and improvements additionally the new alpha update will bring in other new features and improvements while supporters can read the full update change log in the ready or not private forums below are listed some of the main new features players will find in game the training level now has a night variant available while supporters may remember a night version being present in one of the earlier alpha builds this version version has gone through multiple reiterations and optimization passes. Besides less lethal weapons, multiple other first person weapon animations are currently under an overhaul and you'll start seeing new, better looking ones in game. Point shooting has now been introduced to the game. The crosshair will no longer recenter to the middle of the screen when swaying left and right. So players will need to learn to control the sway to aim at targets on screen. Changing character speed will now also change the angle at which the player character holds their gun which will allow for better maneuverability in tight spaces. We have also added a new startup cinematic when the game has launched to introduce some gameplay tips for new or unaware players. I think I actually saw that, but I'm not entirely sure if that's what that was. The first passive audio propagation system for players has now been added to the 
game, alongside other sound improvements. As mentioned in one of our previous development updates, we have continued to improve the pre-match weapon customization UI, and it certainly does feel better to be honest, making it more accessible and intuitive. This is one reiteration of many, and we still plan to improve it further down the road. As also mentioned in a previous update, we have also added in first person animations for reload, while aiming down sides without losing target acquisition. And yeah, I actually quite like that, pretty neat. Although they haven't added a default key so that I can actually fix my reloading keybinds. So I mean, eh. And that's pretty much it for the newsletter. Overall, it's a relatively decent sized newsletter with quite a few changes. So let's go ahead and jump into my experience with this update. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that this update was very mixed for me. Like I'll start with the good here. I definitely think that the animations have overall improved. I'm not saying that they're the greatest. They have definitely improved. It's definitely better than what I had played previously. The running and walking animation just looks a lot better along with aiming and shooting reloading is much to be desired because you know i still haven't been able to actually use all the reloads because they still haven't added in a default button to fix my key binds but i really do like how when you're aiming in you actually keep the gun aiming as you're reloading i really like that feature weapon bashing was in the game before but they didn't actually have an animation for it they did take it out of the game for a little bit which kind of ruined gun game but with this update they do bring it back and now there's an actual animation for it to be honest i don't know how effective it is because there's just not a whole lot of people playing the multiplayer and i never really get close enough to people to actually you know bash them but before they took it out of the game it was basically like an instant kill but i'm sure they like really nerfed it in this game for sure again i'm not really sure how effective it is but it's nice to finally see melee bashing in the game i remember the developer saying a while back that they weren't going to have it but it's here now so yeah they also added in this feature where you can actually put the gun on its side the way that it works is that you just pull back on the middle mouse and he like flips it so like if you have a uh, laser pointer it'll actually use the laser pointer as a reference to aim you know i think my biggest issue with it is that it's also tied to the middle mouse so when you scroll back on it your guy tends to go slow as he's using the method of aiming so maybe if we could switch that to another button i think that would be better but uh yeah they darken the map to encourage night vision and flashlights night vision seemed to work a little better now before you couldn't really see much and for some reason when you put them on the room would start pulsing like you could see like a bunch of like lights just like flowing through the level which was freaking weird so yeah those work a little better i think the last thing that i want to talk about here is that they are updating the ui so that it's actually in a box form which yes thank goodness this is actually a lot better than what they had before it could still use a lot of work though because i still have to like move my mouse all around the screen to freaking get where i need to go but at least now it's just like a drop down menu and not something where i have to like go all around the screen but what i would like to see with this drop down menu is the camera actually move to where the uh attachment is being put on so i can actually see what it looks like it's just a you know minor thing right there i definitely like this thing how it's in like a box form but i can't see what i'm actually adding on that's just my only gripe with that and uh yeah uh here's one thing that i stumbled upon the medical system i'm not entirely sure if this was actually in the game before but it actually does look kind of cool he kind of like hits his leg back into place there and then later on you can actually use morphine to try and fix it to stop the pain that's pretty neat i'm not sure if that was actually in the game before or not but uh yeah so that's pretty much all of the good when it comes to this update now let's get into the bad here just the fact that it's a multiplayer update like maybe not a lot of you know but a majority of the people that are trying to play this game are usually in it only for the co-op and sure this update will help animations in the co-op but this is inherently a multiplayer update so yeah not a lot of people are fans of the multiplayer just judging by the draw to players in these matches but void keeps continuing to only give us multiplayer updates so there's that when i first played this update there was at least five different crashes that i experienced before i said fuck it i'm done this round was a success Responsible for this unit. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, oh, you gotta be motherfucking kidding me. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, guys. Would pay, would, would pay $120 for this game. This was probably the most unstable update yet, but at least it was actually given to the testers to test out this update. I mean, they're six months late, but could you imagine what would have happened if these guys decided to give it to more content creators with like a million subscribers and they saw these crashes? That would have been awkward. So props to them for doing that. But the day after I actually got an update saying that they fixed the crashes. So I decided to go back into the game to see if I can actually try it out without the crashes. But when I got in, I ran into another problem, server disconnection. Did somebody forget to pay the freaking bills or what? 
As hard as I tried, I really couldn't get it to another match. So I tried to see if I could actually, you know, just host a game, but the game doesn't actually allow you to play the other game modes. And speaking of game modes, they said that there was supposed to be three new game modes, VIP Escort, Arrest and Rescue, and Team Deathmatch. But the rotation for the multiplayer is fucked because I only played VIP Escort and Arrest and Rescue once, and the rest were all King of the Hill, which is a game mode that has been here for freaking ever at this point. I am getting sick and tired of King of the Hill on the exact same map. Like what they really should have done was just either taken the game mode out and let us play VIP and Arrest and Rescue and Deathmatch and gave us a different map because what's here is already stale. But yeah, anyways, but let me talk about the game modes that I actually did get to play. So Arrest and Rescue was very confusing to me. I wasn't even sure what I was actually supposed to do. I went in, I killed two people and I guess we won. Yeah, so the point of it is essentially like a search and destroy type of thing where basically you're just trying to eliminate the other team but it has the caveat of if you arrest one of the other team then you basically get your team back and that's basically arrest and rescue if i was able to actually get more time with it or you know more matches maybe i would you know have a better standing with it but i honestly can't say for sure if it's really good or not it just seems like one of those game modes that goes really fast and you never actually get like a hold of anything so yeah vip it was probably the worst experience that I had actually had because for some reason they allow the player to be the VIP. This is, yeah, this is kind Someone of retarded, to be honest. The, no, the, the VIP is like, this. Like, no, like, supposed to like you, not like you. Like, why why would they make, like, why would they make a player a VIP? I'm tied up! Who else? Didn't guys? they do that before? Wait, hang on. Other than the AI, that's fucking Someone shitty. Someone cut me loose! Yeah, true. AI. If, if, yeah, yeah, the AI just did. Yeah, because yeah. I'm just basically going to be sitting here fucking the entire time. Someone like, cut yeah, me free! That's a bit shitty. So I might oh, as well just like fucking better. go over here and like look at something else. But worth it for you. Yeah, it's just gonna be You know, you just escape from them. Come rag. So initially when I actually started this out, oh cool, we got a new skin, yeah. But then the game starts up and I'm just like sitting there all tied up and I'm just like, what the hell is this? So like a player is just supposed to sit here and do nothing the entire match? That's pretty freaking lame. So that's not actually how it's supposed to be. How it's supposed to be is that there's supposed to be an AI that sits there while the actual players go in and try to get him out. But since there's no AI, they substitute it with an actual player, which is just dumb as hell. Cause what player is gonna freaking sit there for an entire match and do absolutely nothing before i could actually quit though the game crashed so i mean great but another problem with it is that you could just kill the hostage and win the game i'm bleeding bad <laughs> my teammates were just getting tired of trying to get to me and he just straight shot me i died and they won the match what the fuck oh <laughs> And the people that were holding me hostage literally shot me and they won the game. So, okay, first of all, a player should not be the hostage. And second, you shouldn't be able to kill him. VIP was definitely the worst experience. So yeah, they took out leaning, which annoyed the hell out of me and added in more screams, but they were very over-exaggerated. It's good. Damn. Oh, okay, guy, you didn't need to add that extra. He's still going? He's still going! He's still going! <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Like, when you die, one scream is enough. You don't need to go freaking overboard. But yeah, that's pretty much all I really have to say about this update. It's very mixed, for me at least. But let me know what you thought. Were you someone that actually played this update? Let me know down in the comments below. Because I'm gonna end it here. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, be sure to like, share, and comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.